Hello everyone, welcome to Michael Murphy's personal online lecture about genomes, proteomes, how they are usually polymorphic. Alright, let's get started. Do, 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 do. Genome. What is a genome? It is a complete genetic composition of a cell or a species. As you see the picture on the right hand side of your screen, it's a picture of DNA which is the genetic information. You have a chromosome, you have a cute little baby. Next, proteome. It's a complete complement of proteins that a cell or organism can make. Basically, it is all of the proteins that a cell can make. Now, in a cell, you have the DNA, and then you have proteins, and our genes code for more proteins than the, num than the total number of genes. So the total number of genes codes for a greater number of proteins. So that means that gene A can make two proteins, and gene B can make like three proteins. Why? Alternative splicing. It just mixes introns and extra introns and exons. So it'll help get this new peptide chain. What does it mean to be polymorphic? When I said in the title genes are usually polymorphic, well, what does that mean? Polymorphism is the phenomenon that many traits or genes may display variation within a population. Po populations that are polymorphic have more than one phenotype for a trait. Okay, that means that you could have like a flower, it could be red, it could be yellow. It's a phenotype. But only one gene codes for color. So you have two alleles for one gene. And it is normally due to two or more alleles that influence a single trait. An example of this would be the orchid. Look how beautiful those flowers are in that field. See, there are red flowers and then there are yellow flowers. Why? Two different alleles one trait, the gene. Alright, after talking about polymorphic, got to talk about monomorphic. It is a gene that exists predominantly as a single allele in a population. So, back again to the example of the two flowers that I just show, shown. Um, so, they could either be all red or all yellow if the color was only monomorphic. It is when individuals in a population are identical with regard to a particular phenotype, phenotype trait. Once again, they could be all yellow or all red. That's just an example. A polymorphic gene is a gene that commonly exists as two or more alleles in a population. Each allele must occur with a frequency greater than 1% in order to for it to be a polymorphic gene. Population. Because I will be using the term population a lot and you will be hearing it excuse me, throughout chapter 24, it's good to know just what it is. So, helps you learn a population group of individuals with the, of the same species that occupy the same environment and can interbreed with one another. So a lot like how humans are. So, humans move, whatever. So let's just take the population of Votech. That could be. So we don't really interbreed. <laughs> uh, what causes a polymorphic gene? Uh, deletion of a significant region of a gene. As I said before, a polymorphic gene is a gene that exists as two or more alleles in a population. So deletion of a significant region can have an allele can cause two alleles one that has a region one that has region X and one that has and one that does not have region X or perhaps a duplication of a region so one can have region X and then another allele can have region 2x also the change in a single nucleotide that's going to be a big one because next slide single Nucleotide polymorphism. This is the most common change 
and a polymorphic allele. So it is a, it's also the smallest type of genetic change, but it is the most common. The picture on the right shows um, how sickle cell anemia occurred. And basically they just, the adenine and thiamine just swapped in a single nucleotide swap and that caused the beta globin gene to not be as functional. So it cannot carry as much oxygen, hence the sickle cell shape. Single nucleotide polymorphism continued. Single nucleotide polymorphic, polymorphic changes account for 90% of human variation in DNA sequences. Just a number to put out there, about for every 2,000 to 3,000 base pairs of a gene, on average, it contains 10 different single nucleotide polymorphic changes. So that's like 10, 10 changes over 2,000 base pairs, so that'll be 1 over 200. So, math people go solve that. Why are SNPs important? Well, small changes in DNA can affect protein function encoded by genes. They affect how humans could develop a disease because if a change in a gene increases your risk for a certain disease or cancer, well then you're gonna most likely have a higher probability of being susceptible to that disease, which sucks. How many people respond, uh, how people respond to viruses, drugs, and vaccines? Example of how it can affect a uh, disease for humans would be heart disease, but also because we use personalized medicine, so we take information about the genotype, and we use that to individualize the Medicare, or the, the medicine, not, not Medicare, um, yeah, allele frequency, that is the number of copies of a specific allele in a population over the total number of alleles for that gene. An example in the book is, let's say that we have 100 plants, 49 red flower plants, 42 pink flower plants and 9 white and you want to find the allele frequency for the white plant so well the pink plant well it's definitely not going to be the 49 red plants because red is a dominant trait and white is a recessive and the pink is codominant so you would take uh, the total number of alleles in the pink plant which would be 42 times uh, nine, 9, which is the total number of alleles in the white plant. Multiply that times 2. And put that over the total number of alleles that you would have. So it would be, so be, so be the 49 plants. So it would be the 49 red plants. 49, 2 times 49 because there's 2 CR alleles plus 2 times CR CW, which would be for the pink, plus 2 times the white plant. So that would be, that would originally equate to 60 over 200 or 30%. Next slide. Genotype frequency. Excuse me. That is the number of individuals with a particular genotype in a population divided by the total number of individuals in a population. So back with the example of the flowers, the 100 flowers, the 49 red flower plants, 42 pink flower plants, and the 9 white flower plants. Let's look, let's look for the frequency of CWW, which would be the genotype for white flower plants. So all we would do, we would take uh, we would take the nine white flower plants because there are, you know, take the number nine because there are nine plants with the genotype CWW, which is what we're looking for. Put it over 
the total number of, indiv of individuals with, within that population, so it would be 100, and that would equate to about 0 0.09 or 9%. Next, the Hardy-Weinberg equation. Sam covered this a lot in his lecture, so my, so I'm just going to be very brief with it. It is the allele and genotype frequencies are to remain the same in a given population at equal equilibrium. And this almost never happens because the criteria is never met. Also, uh, the equation for it is P squared plus 2PQ plus Q squared is equal to 1. That relates to allele and genotype frequencies. And it is supposed to be used to predict equilibrium if no new mutations are formed. This never happens. And why doesn't it never happen? Because the conditions for equilibrium are never met. Because mutations are always occurring. Like I said, single nucleotide polymorphic changes occur, occur for every 2,000 and 3,000 base pairs that are copied. So oh, that's a lot. And that's 10. T 10 changes for every 2,000. No natural selection occurs. Unfortunately, this doesn't happen also. No survival reproductive advantages exist for any genotypes. Also not true. The population is so large that allele frequencies do not change due to random chance. Once again, we cannot be sure of this. No migration occurs between different populations. Fortunately, this happens. For example, the humans, or the population of Votech, when they go off to college, some might go out of state, so that would different population. That would just change it right there. That's an example. Random mating occurs. That is, members of a population mate with each other without regard to their phenotypes and genotypes. People are very picky, so that one is certainly false. Microevolution is changes the gene pool from generation to generation. When you hear the term gene pool, I want to be clear that we all know what that means. Gene pool is all of the genes in a population. This is brought up by the introduction of new genetic variation into a population and by one or more mechanisms that alter the prevalence of a given allele or genotype in a population. Sources of new genetic variation include new mutations within genes that create new alleles, gene duplication, exon shuffling, horizontal gene transfer, and provide continuous source of new variation. And these provide a continuous source of new variation to populations. What alters the frequency of existing gene variation? That will be natural selection, genetic drift, migration, non-random mating. These mechanisms support widespread change in a population. The last thing I'll be showing you is a table from your book. It's a little crop out. And it has what I stated in the past two slides. That is it. I am done. Peace.